Hi, and welcome to the end times. Today we'll be talking about a subject well known to many called Armageddon. Armageddon, also known as the Battle of the Battles or World War III, is closer than most people really think. This period of time will commence in the middle of the seven year tribulation period when armies of the world will gather in the Middle East on a place known as the Valley of Megiddo in Israel for one simple reason, to wage war. Hence comes the word Armageddon from the Valley of Megiddo. There are four known facts about Armageddon that we should be aware of. Let's go to them quickly. Fact number one, the war of Armageddon will start in the middle of the seven year tribulation period, meaning the last three and a half years, according to Revelation 16:16. 16, 16. This war will involve all nations of the world, according to Zechariah 14.2. Now, the next one is this war will pit all nations against the Lord Jesus Christ and His anointed ones, according to Psalms 2, 1 through 6. Number 4, this war will end with revelation of Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, according to Revelation 19.11 through the 21. Now, before this war takes place, a few things must fall into place in order for it to happen. First, the Antichrist consolidation of power. The Antichrist will sign a seven-year peace treaty between the Jews and the Arabs. That will be the only man to accomplish this. At this point, the Antichrist will now ha not have total control of the world yet, but will have confidence of the, most of the people, and people will begin to trust him. He will have to fight the Russian Confederacy and, of course, powerful and mighty China, according to Daniel 11.40. Explained, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come up against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. This is a passage of the Bible. Now, following the miraculous defeat of the Russian armies and their Arab allies by Israel. The Antichrist will vent his fury against a massive eastern force of 200 million men, challenging his power. This will be China, of course. The casualties in this confrontation will total one-third of the Earth's population, according to Revelation 9, 14 through 19. With the entire world subservient to him, he will sit on the throne and the man worship to him in the newly rebuilt Jewish temple in Jerusalem. The temple will be rebuilt. He will then assume total economic control and require that his mark be taken in the right hand or in the forehead. Now, without this mark, no one can buy or sell or do any transaction or any business whatsoever. The beast will rule the earth assisted by the false prophet and guided and energized by Satan himself, according to Revelation 13, 4 through 8. Now, according to Daniel 11, 44 through 45, all opposition to the Antichrist will finally be put down, and he shall become a world super dictator. All threats from the north, east, and the south will be overcome. The Antichrist will be able to accomplish the dreams of dictators like Caesar, Napoleon, and Adolf Hitler. Now, number two, 144,000 Jews will be sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's another important event, which of course has to happen before Armageddon does take place. 144 Jews will be sealed by Jesus Christ Himself, according to Revelation 7, 40 through 8. 12,000 will be converted to Christ from each tribe. Now, during the tribulation period, they will be able to reach millions upon millions of people from all nations. This is a massive calling. These converts to Christ will realize that there is a price to pay for accepting Jesus Christ, of course, during the tribulation period. But it will be well worth it. According to Revelation 7, 19, 17, 13, and 15, and 24, these conversions will mean martyrdom for many. Now these 144,000
10,000 converted Hebrew Christian evangelists will preach the gospel of the kingdom. They will be announcing the coming of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Amen for that. Which will fulfill the prophecy of Matthew 24:14, which clearly states, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Millions will be saved after the rapture, but many will be executed for their beliefs because this conversion to Christianity will make, guess what, the Antichrist very, very angry, and his anger will be uh, vented and explode in worldwide massacres all over. This is when you will finally see the true side of the Antichrist in the last three and a half years. The defeat of the Russian army will be number three. A wave of anti-Semitism will sweep the earth during this period, according to Revelation 12, 17. This will be motivated by Antichrist and Satan himself. The defeat of the Russian army by the Jews, which will take place and will happen, and delivers from their grasp, will cause many Jews to turn to Christ, realizing that he was responsible for their victory, as stated in Ezekiel 39:22. Now, number four, the two witnesses, they will appear in those last set, the end times. Two powerful prophets, we don't know who they really are yet, only Jesus Christ and God know, will appear in Jerusalem and will witness and preach there for three and a half years. These two prophets will reinforce the message of those 144,000 servants of God and they will be miraculously protected by God for a period of 42 months, according to Revelation 6. 11.6. This describes them by indicating the following. These, uh, meaning the prophets, have the power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all kinds of plagues, as often as they desire. So God will be giving these two prophets plenty of power to perform miracles. They will point out the timetable to the return of Jesus Christ and the setup of his kingdom. Now, when the two witnesses have finished their work, they will be slain, and the television cameras will televise their dead bodies in the streets of Jerusalem so that the whole world will see. Okay, this is part of God's plan, but there is a catch to it. In other words, God is doing this for one purpose. The news of their death will cause all the ungodly to celebrate and rejoice, according to Revelation 11.10. But after three and a half days, they will be resurrected and will ascend to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watch in fear. That was it. Now, number five, the call to Armageddon. After seeing the resurrection of these two witnesses, the success of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists preaching all over the world and the rejecting of the world dictator and his rule, this world dictator will announce a campaign to destroy the Jewish race once and for all. He will blame the Jews, he will blame them for all the world's problems, all the mishaps, and along with having been warned of the time of the return of Jesus Christ, this Antichrist, guess what he's going to do? He's going to summon all the armies of the world to the Middle East to destroy the Jews and defeat their Messiah at his coming, which is Jesus Christ. Number six, here is where all hell breaks loose. The leaders of the earth who are subservient to the Antichrist, those that follow the Antichrist, will be convinced to move their military power to the Middle East. The Antichrist will have influence over them, and they will move their troops there to do battle with Jesus Christ at his return to Mount of Olives, according to Zechariah 14.4. Now, these leaders will see miracles performed by the Antichrist and false prophets with satanic powers. Thus, they will be convinced, and it will be, this will be convincing them, that this world leader is the true Messiah, according to Revelation 64. They will be fooled into thinking that the Antichrist is the true Messiah, which he's not. Armageddon will be a time when man will feel invincible, and he will demonstrate his pride and the use of their technology and weaponry. And we do have some uh, amazing weaponry available at our disposal now, as you can see. So Jesus Christ's return must be right around the corner. Now, Zeke, by the world leader, who is energized by Satan, 
The armies of the earth will march to battle expecting to defeat Jesus Christ, the one they rejected for Satan. An awesome array of weapons will be used to battle against Jesus Christ, but guess what? But the enemies of the Lord will be defeated, or the enemy of the world will be defeated, according to Revelation 19, 19-21. Armageddon will end the rebellion of man against God and the Antichrist, along with his sidekick, the false prophet. And they both will be cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone for eternity. With all the destruction of Armageddon, of course, there will be plenty of work to do. The church, having returned with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, will share in these big responsibilities. It will be us. The kingdom of Christ will be established. Amen and praise God for that. And the violent age will finally end. There will be peace at last. Amen and Amen. This is a short uh, description of what entails Armageddon. Of course, it is very, very lengthy and very detailed, but uh, this is just an idea of what's going to take place in Armageddon. If you want more information and full details, please feel free to pick up a copy of my book titled, Welcome to the End Times. Here you will read full details of what takes place in Armageddon. That could be obtained through my website, www.endtimes.us.com. Till next time, Lord willing, God bless you and thank you.